Hey guys, so I'm sure many of you have been spending a lot of time at home just like me. And I don't know about you guys, but at my house, we've seen a true uptick in video gaming. My kids are on them quite a bit during this time. So one thing that's taken a true beating has been my coffee table. I needed a coffee table that could game as hard as my kids do. So I designed the most awesome DIY video game coffee table. This thing's got four big legs, solid top, great storage for all the games, and the weight capacity, we haven't even begun to max it out yet. Let's check it out. All right, the first thing that I'm gonna do on this coffee table is uh, make my cross cuts for my two by sixes. So I designed the whole table with two by sixes minus the legs because that will save a lot of money and it's also super strong. I love the way it stains and they're always really easy to find straight at the hardware store. So what I'm doing first is making my cross cuts. Then I'll take that over to my table saw to make my rip cuts because I like the shorter boards going through the table saw because it's a lot easier. So I'm gonna get those done now. All right, so cross cuts are made and now I am going to run each of these boards down my table saw. I've set it to five and a quarter, which will shave off one of the rounded edges of each of the boards. And then I will start moving my gate separately for the three inch cuts, the four inch cuts, and the five inch cuts. So I have all of my cross cuts made. I have run everything through the table saw and now I'm ready for pocket holes. Now, I would usually use my K5 because I'm showing you guys and teaching you guys, but I'm pulling out my foreman for this one because I have a lot of pocket holes to make and this is gonna save me a ton of time. For those of you that build a lot, this is definitely a great investment. You'll see. It's like the Craig jig on steroids. So um, I've laid this out. I kind of have my drawing here so I know where to put these pocket holes. Y'all can download the free plans um, in the link below and it'll show where to put all of your pocket holes. Because I'm using two by boards for this entire build, all of these pocket holes will be one and a half inches, which makes it super easy. So here we go. Always make sure that you're putting your pocket holes on the side that won't get seen. So these are the boards for the bottom shelf of the coffee table. And so I'm going to have multiple pocket holes on this because they attach together and they also attach to the side apron. Alright, so y'all can see these are the one and a half inch pocket holes going through. This will attach to the next board. But I'm also going to flip this over and make some coming this way, which will again attach to our side apron. I'll do this on the two outside pieces. Alright, we got this board done. Several more to go. Okay, so at this point, I am going to attach these shelf boards and I'm also going to attach the boards that will be the top of the table. Um, again, these are one and a half inch pocket holes and I'm using two and a half inch pocket hole screws. And so these are gonna be the ones that attach to the apron here in a, a next step. And then these right here are gonna attach to this board, which attach to this board. And then you have these pocket holes that are gonna attach to the apron on this side. So these guys here on the end are also going to go into the smaller aprons here on each side. So I am about to start attaching. We want everything nice and flush and um, that's it. No glue, just, just screws on this one. Okay guys, we are at the fun part now where we get to add the pretty legs. So I found these on Amazon. Um, however, they are uh, Shaney the Chic designed through Osborne Wood, and I will link to those. Um, they are, you get a set of four, and the finish is awesome, they stain great. So what I'm doing first is I am attaching my first runner, and I want it to be flush with the inside of this leg and also flush with the bottom. So I'm attaching these with wood glue and two and a half inch pocket hole screws. 
So it is flush with my inside, flush with my bottom. And again, I'm attaching these using two and a half inch pocket holes and wood glue. Okay, first one in. Whoa, just kidding, got a little excited there. So that's my first one. And now I'm going to add my second. So now what I'm doing is I'm adding a two inch piece right here and I'm going to attach it with these two pocket holes first. So I'm adding just a little blob of wood glue and I want my pocket holes facing in because these are gonna be covered up in a later step. Same screws, two and a half inch wood screws. I mean, excuse me, Craig screws, pocket hole screws. Make sure I'm nice and flush. Got that one done. Okay, so that was the first leg I attached up here. And then I set this one down on the bottom. I'm just using one of my extra boards right here to kind of hold it up in place so that I can attach these pocket holes down here. And I'm also turning it around and I'm going to attach these two pocket holes down here at the bottom as well, just like I did initially. And then I'm going to also be attaching them together. So that is one short side that I have so far. I'm going to go through the top and into the side runner right here with some two inch wood screws. Now I'm working my way around. So I've got my short apron done on this side. Now I'm gonna come this way with both my long aprons, doing the exact same thing, attaching the base first and then I will continue with the one on top of it. I am, again, flush with the inside and the bottom of the leg, adding a little bit of line wood glue and also attaching with my pocket hole screws. It's gonna be one beefy coffee table, which is good for my gamer. Okay, that side's done. Now I'm gonna move on to this. All right, guys, at this point, I have all four of these bottom aprons done and attached, just like I did on the step before. So I've attached them all the same way, flush on the inside, flush on the bottom. And now, before I add that inner shelf, I'm gonna go ahead and do the top part because it's gonna make that shelf easier to attach. These are gonna be um, three-inch boards that I am attaching with wood glue and two and a half inch pocket hole screws, just like we attached the three inch pieces. They're gonna face me because we, the tabletop will sit on top of them so no one will ever see them. Um, and so I am attaching, or I'm adding wood glue to these ends. And it might be a bit of a tight squeeze, but that's a good thing. There we go. Mallets are handy for that. I'm gonna get that side attached and then my other four. Okay, I am adding my final top apron piece. Um, I'm actually gonna use a little clamp, a little Irwin clamp, clamp to serve as my second hand over here. Probably actually should have done it on the other side, but that's okay. And I left the wood glue over there too, good lord. I quit. And I'm just adding wood glue where this goes. Got this in place. And I am attaching it with the two and a half inch pocket hole screws. I'm inside a table. Now. And this here. Pretty sound. All right. And then let me move to this side. And you just want this nice and flush because this is what your tabletop is going to sit on. Okay, I've got all four of my top apron pieces attached and now I'm ready to move on with that tabletop. But before I do, I need to cut my breadboard. So I already have them cut mostly to size and already ripped down, but I like to hold them in place to get the exact measurement. So these are three inch boards. I have cut them just a hair long as you'll see because I want to get the exact cut and I'm going to come in on the side with my pencil and mark that. Got that one. 
And then I'm going to call that that side. I'll do it a bit. Not terrible. And I'm marking this one. I'm going to head to the table saw and make these cuts real quick. Now, again, I'm not using glue. We have a lot of people question our use of pocket holes on breadboards, but we have absolutely no problem doing it. So, for those of you that are frowning at me right now, I appreciate your opinion. But I'm still using pocket holes for this, and it will still look great. Okay, I've got two in. I'm going to keep going down the board and get both sides attached. All right, so we are now going to be attaching the base to the top. So I'm flipping this over. It's not too heavy. I mean, it's strong enough for fork, but it's not that heavy. And I believe I allowed for a one inch overhang on all sides. So I'm going to go ahead and get that lined up. Okay, so what I'm doing, I've got this lined up and I'm attaching it through my apron and into the tabletop with those two and a half inch wood screws that we used on the step earlier. I'm not using any wood glue on this part, just my screws in case I need to move it and it's easier to move if you can remove the tabletop. Final screw for the tabletop and then we are going to, <laughs> together, figure out the best way to attach the shelf. I'm going to sit it on its side because I think that might be my best bet. All right, kiddos. I'm super happy because the shelf fit literally perfectly. I mean, I didn't even have to use a mallet. Makes me so happy. No manhandling this one. So what I've done is I've lined it up flush with the top of that top apron on the bottom. And then I am attaching it with the pocket hole screw, or excuse me, with pocket hole screws through the pocket holes we made around each side. I'm gonna attach, I'm actually gonna attach one on each side to kind of hold everything and then I'll go back and fill everything in. Okay, so I've got two in. I'm gonna keep going all the way around and get this whole shelf attached. All right guys, so day two here. And after thinking on it last night, I decided to go ahead and add some trim down here at the bottom. I'm also gonna look at adding it up top to see what it will do for the design. So that's what we're doing right now. I found some really pretty stick trim at Lowe's and I'm gonna get this cut down to size and attached. All right, so I have cut this stick trim down to size. All three of these pieces are actually gonna be the same size. And I'm going and attaching it by adding a line of wood glue and into place. I'm attaching it using my 18 gauge rod nailer. I just like the way it dresses up that side quite a bit. So I'm going to do a piece right here, and I'm going to add a piece right here, and work my way around. Work my way around. Work my way around. All right, trim is done. So now I'm going to use my sander around this entire thing, get everything nice and smooth before I add my stain. I love what the trim added to the sides. I think it's going to look so pretty with the stain. And to sand this, I'm going to be using my Craftsman Orbital Sander, and I also have um, 120 grit gator sanding pads I'm going to start with, and then I'll finish it off with something a little more fun. To finish my table, I used a mix of two stains. I used two of my favorites, Classic Gray and Golden Oak, equal parts of both. These are by Minwax. You just mix them together in a little plastic tub and then apply and wipe off the excess. I love the finish that using the mix of these gives and it's super easy to do. I am gonna let this dry and then give it a coat of poly before I move it in the house because this thing is definitely gonna get settled. That's why we created it. So if you need a piece of furniture that can withstand this quarantine life, you've gotta build this thing. All right, y'all be sure to subscribe. You don't wanna miss any more of our builds. Stop recording. GoPro, stop recording. GoPro, stop recording. Are you kidding me? What a piece of poop. Why did I do pocket holes on this? Because these are the ones that I'm going to use.
These are not my bread. Welcome to the world of stew. <sighs> it's real hot out here. It was like chilly this morning. I think if I can say anything else, but I don't. Okay, go bro. Stop recording. GoPro, stop recording. GoPro, stop recording.